I'm back with another GMK Tech. I really like these things. Previously, I had done this one and then another one, but I thought I'd check this out because it's different enough to be worth checking out. This has an AMD Ryzen 5 Pro 6650H. That's a Rembrandt socket FP7. The base frequency is 3.3 gigahertz. This thing goes way beyond basic office use. That 12 thread chip can run up to 40 watts, so it handles multitasking, virtualization, uh, real workloads, you know, it doesn't break a sweat. It has dual 2.5 gig ethernet, Wi-Fi 6E, USB 4. It has an Oculink port. Um, I will note that you can't do like active swaps. You have to power it down to plug in the Oculink or you might run into some trouble there. This does have DDR5, 16 gigs in the model I have with one terabyte drive. They have a couple other options available on their website to get it configured. I do want to apologize here about my lighting. Unfortunately, my Amaran light died and it was still under warranty, so I'm waiting for a warranty replacement and that process is taking a little bit of time. I have Geekbench 6 up here and I went ahead and ran a CPU benchmark and it did come in at 1913 for the single core and 7,445 for the multi-core. Everything seems exactly what I would expect for this processor, nothing too crazy. You do get about a 2057 on file compression, 2031 on asset compression. Pretty much everything's right around 2000 or right around 1800, except for navigation, which came in at 1565. The multi-core performance, your score jumps up to 7,445. Uh, this stuff's kind of all over the place, but again, what I would expect for it. So I'm going to run the GPU benchmark. I did make sure I updated all the drivers. It has the newest drivers. While that's doing that, I want to talk about updates for a second on this. Now, when I got it out of the box, you know, it does all the Windows update stuff and it takes forever and it warns you that on the, the Ethernet ports. So if you want to use the computer right away, uh, don't plug in Ethernet, just like the stickers say on the back. But the updates. So one of the Windows updates would not install one of the, I think it was a service pack or something. And I fought that for seven or eight reboots. And then I thought, huh, I wonder, because I had this problem on a different brand before. And I went into the BIOS and sure enough, secure boot was off. I found that the Windows updates just really don't like when secure boots off sometimes. So I turned secure boot on, uh, started it up. Then I went ahead, just to be safe, I did the Windows update, uh, like repair tool thing. You can just Google how to do that. I ran that, rebooted, update took fine. So if you run into that problem, um, that's your solution. Sometimes these things just get weird with the updates because of the way they like install it at the factory or whatever, I think. Um, but I also think it might be the secure boot because I tried 15 things and nothing worked. And as soon as I turned secure boot on and then you know did that repair or whatever, it worked fine and we were off to the races. Other than that, I've had no issues with this computer. Sometimes on these things, you cannot get AMD or whatever chip they have, like Intel, to uh, recognize in the software. So you can't get them to update. I did not have that problem with this. I downloaded their little you know, driver detect thing, installed it, it immediately found the processor, knew everything that was there. Okay, we're done here with the graphics. We're at 14,612 OpenCL score. Again, that's about what I would expect out of this Ryzen Pro 5. Uh, one processor, six cores, 12 threads, 3.3 gigahertz, six cores. And everything's looking the way it should. Again, it detects the memory. It keeps detecting my RAM is 12.74 gigabytes. And I wonder if maybe because there's whatever that three, whatever is uh, taken up by the system or something. Uh, we'll look in DXDIG here in a minute too. But again, you know, the scores are, are about what I would expect. So let's close some of this stuff out. Let's do DXDIAG real fast. When I go into Windows System Settings, it sees the 16 gigs fine. Uh, yeah, it does here too. So that must just be Geekbench seeing the stuff that's, or not seeing the stuff that's used by the system. Yeah, everything looks good there. I will go ahead and fire up uh, 3D Mark and we'll run a couple of those tests. I think we'll do the SSD one first. That way I can go get the mail because the post office is about to open while well, it's running. And then I'll come back and we'll hit some of the other ones too. If you're going to be moving lots of data regularly, I might look at doing something about the SSD in this, but it's all right, probably for 99% of users. Did get a 1569 average of 2286. The best you know, 3D Mark scene is about 36,000. On average, you're getting about 267.7 megabytes a second. 
The lowest was recording a game at 90.86 megabytes a second. The highest was moving a game file at 1,159.23 megabytes. So we will run Solar Bay Extreme. We got an 878. Everything looks pretty normal. You can't do estimated game performance. Sometimes Solar Bay Extreme does that. So we're on another benchmark here. Fire Strike Ultra just finished. Again, I'm having issues with estimated game performance. Sometimes 3D Mark is just a pain in the butt, but I can already tell by looking at this, this is gonna run a lot of stuff at Ultra at 1080, and it'll run some stuff, um, you know, 4K, a little bit lower settings. Let's try one more just to see if we can get some kind of result. We'll try Time Spy Extreme. Well, this is finishing up. I will say under load, this thing makes a little bit of noise. I don't know how you can hear that. I moved my mic over by it. But it's got a bit of a whine. Um, that's just the size of the fan. If it was a bigger fan, it could move slower, etc. So keep that in mind. And you could probably, you know, figure out where to mount this if you're going to be doing heavy stuff and the sound mattered. I never care about fan sound because I usually have a noise canceling headphones on when I'm at a computer. But your mileage may vary. While on that subject, let me show you better here. The fan is there on the bottom, so you're not gonna vase amount this or anything, but just keep that in mind. So Battlefield 5, I really wish they'd update this to have Battlefield 6. Battlefield 5, 1440 Ultra, less than 30, but over 40 uh, 1080p Ultra, so that's pretty good. Uh, Fortnite, you should be able to do 1080p Ultra fine. 1440 doesn't have data for it, but 85 plus frames at 1080p Ultra for Fortnite is plenty good. Uh, I just play, Fortnite at like the lowest 1080p settings and it still looks really good. So that is that. I do want to do the CPU profile one on here too real fast. That's normally quicker. I really like these GMK techs. Uh, this one has a nice metal top. It stayed pretty cool. Under these tests, it's got a little warm, so it is acting as kind of a heat sink. Uh, you got good airflow on it. You have some nice I.O. here on the front. You have USB-C. You have the Oculink, the of your two USB-A's and a headphone jack. And then on the back, you know, you got your dual uh, two and a half gig ports. You've got a uh, display port and then the HDMI. You have two USB-A's. And then you do have the little lock retention thing. I wish it had a USB-C or two on the back. You've only got the one on the front. So that's something to keep in mind is a lot more stuff moves to USB-C. Uh, the keyboards I prefer to use use USB-C. So I would be using one up and then wouldn't be able to plug something else in without an adapter. So keep that in mind. You'd always get a hub or something. This should be about done. It's on the two thread test. I think it does a single core thread test after that. So far, everything's looked pretty good. Um, I feel like I've watched enough of these to know when a processor's gonna kind of struggle a lot. Well, obviously it's not doing the best, you know, the frames and the sim time and stuff. Everything looks pretty good for this class of processor. So, well, we'll see what the results say, but I'm pretty happy with this thing. I think I will go ahead and use this as a little uh, Linux box probably. Oh geez, that would have stunk. I just picked up my Jet KVM and the box started to slide open. Uh, that would have been terrible to break this. I'm not gonna use this on this today. I'm gonna take one of their other machines and I'm gonna put um, a kind of flavor of Windows on it and then use this to control it remotely and test that as my daily driver for a month. But then I think I'll put um, maybe Mint Linux on this one and we will probably do similar. I have a GLI net KVM coming soon. I ordered it over a month ago and they haven't shipped it yet. I emailed them yesterday and they said, well, it's ready to ship. And I'm like, well, please ship it. It's been almost 30 days exactly. And once that comes, I'll hook this up and probably put Mint on here. And I'll kind of bounce back and forth between Mint and that other version of Windows that I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the name of right now. Now, granted it is, let's see here, 60 degrees Fahrenheit in the garage, but this thing is, you know, room temperature. Yeah, I mean, this looks about accurate. I, I could relate this information to you, but you're not really gonna have reference unless you do a bunch of these tests on a bunch of different machines, but I'm pretty happy with that. So for our last thing, just like usual, we will run an LLM. I'm just using LM Studio this time. And let me select my model. We're gonna run OpenAI's GPT OSS 20B because that's that's all the memory this thing has. Normally I use what, Olama or something, I think. 
sometimes I use LM Studio. I just kind of bounce back and forth between them. So let's try this again. Granted, this also is the first time I've run this model on this, so, okay. There we go. Tell me a story about a man, about a YouTuber that was going to go to CES, but decided the cost for the hotel was not wise spending. Have this man, let's see, miss some crazy experience because of it. Tell me what that experience at CS would have been in an alternate universe. Okay, let's let that run. It is 10.04 and 50 seconds. I will come back when it's completed. I honestly expected this one to be done already. It is 10.10 and 50 seconds. All right, it finished about two seconds ago. It is 10.14 and 14 seconds. Uh, in the future, I'm just gonna stick to Olama. That, that just seemed unnecessarily long. We're just gonna Copy the whole thing here. Normally I like to read these, but the thing is wordy, man. We'll see here, uh, word counter. And I'll, I'll, I'll just say that maybe there's something just wonky with this build of LM Studio because it's really bogging the system down. Olama doesn't do that. So I wrote a 1,017 word little story, uh, 6,060 characters. You know, not too bad. It took, took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but. I think that's LM Studio. Overall, I am very happy with this GMK Tech. It is a nice little machine. That Ryzen Pro 5 seems pretty capable for a lot of stuff that you would want to use it for in say a home lab, uh, a college dorm, or just for like your parents or something. It's, it's pretty decent.